A piece of the polar vortex bringing Arctic air to the United States and the first snow of the season for some today and into tomorrow. Welcome in, folks. Happy Saturday. It is December 13th and tracking still uh, winter weather out there. And I know we've got a little bit of a break on the way from some of the winter weather, but not before the first snow of the year for major cities like Philadelphia, uh, areas down towards Baltimore, southern New Jersey, Delaware, even up into New York City, going to get some snow. Uh, and then obviously the brutal cold temperatures that we're going to need to discuss as well. We've got it all and we've got all the details for you here in today's video. If you're new to the channel though, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Doing all so, it's free. doesn't sign you up for some service or anything. All it does is help these videos reach more folks and help me continue to run and grow this channel uh, here into the future. All right, with that said, let's dive right on into it and give you the details. Next to me, this isn't a model. This is just current observations. And uh, yeah, check it out. That's the Arctic air I've been telling you about uh, this afternoon. It is a balmy negative uh, six right now up towards portions of uh, North Dakota into uh, parts of Minnesota. This is that brutal cold that is sliding south and east. We're getting a real false taste of some nicer air today down into the Carolinas. We're up near 60 today into the Charlotte area. Uh, but that cold air on the way, you can see it diving south and east. For my friends up into the northeast, yeah, don't get fooled either by some of the slightly warmer temperatures today, at least comparatively speaking to what's on the way, because yeah, a lot of you have snow and and Arctic air on the way. It's going to definitely be a busy 48 hours ahead. Now you can see we definitely got uh, the cold air on the map. That's not going to be a problem at all in terms of snowfall. Then the question becomes, do we have enough energy to get snow to get, uh, well, to get going here? And I, we definitely do to just leave it uh, as a simple answer. But why is it? Well, we've got this piece of energy, this trough that's currently over the Great Lakes region, but it is starting to pivot through the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley and up into the Northeast. And here on the right-hand side, we've got this area of lift. We've also got a bit of a jet streak folding up uh, or a uh, forming here, I should say. And with that, we're going to have a pocket of rising motion uh, parked right over parts of the Mid-Atlantic from DC all the way up towards New York City. And that's going to really help to get lift going in the atmosphere on top of this cold air. And that's going to be a perfect recipe to get some snow overnight tonight and into tomorrow before eventually that swings on through and just leaves the cold air behind with us. Speaking of that snow, it's already getting going, folks. We've got moderate to heavy snow right now from uh, Indianapolis over towards uh, really much of Ohio into Pittsburgh, West Virginia. It snowed quite good today into Springfield. Uh, we had snow south of Chicago. So if you're getting snow right now, let me know where you're at, what you're seeing, and then uh, how much snow has fallen. We'd love to get those reports. But the next place on the snow train is going to be the Northeast. Yeah, Philadelphia down towards uh, Delaware, D.C., Baltimore, much of New Jersey. And yeah, Long Island, too. You heard that right even parts of coastal New England going to see it. Let's time it out for you and talk about potential totals on the way before all is said and done. All right, let's time this out for you with some of our mesoscale model data. This is the high resolution rapid refresh, old reliable, most of the time at least, <laughs> but uh, let's show it to you. So when many of you are watching this, probably, you know, five, six, uh, seven o'clock this evening, this is what radar is likely to look like. That band of snow continuing to work on through and uh, eventually during the overnight hours pivoting through Pennsylvania, Harrisburg State College. This is by eight, nine o'clock tonight, getting in on the snow, uh, much of uh, northern West Virginia into northern uh, Maryland as well. They're getting in on that snowfall. And later on into the overnight, this band starts to work into some of the major cities, Philadelphia, uh, over towards Trenton. New York City, all of Long Island, up through Connecticut, Rhode Island, and even up towards uh, Massachusetts, going to start to see some snow. I think the heaviest totals, though, out of this going to be down towards Philadelphia, southern central New Jersey, back towards Baltimore, and then up into the New York City metro. That's where we're likely going to get the best uh, rates of snowfall, meaning the heaviest that it's going to come down. It's going to be a wet snow, uh, and it'll continue into the overnight. Here you go, waking up by tomorrow morning. You've had multiple hours of snowfall through Philadelphia into New Jersey. Uh, snow starting to get going down towards uh, D.C., uh, snowing in Baltimore. I think much of the state of Delaware are going to see snow at some point overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. You've got snow into coastal New England, yeah, Nantucket, up towards uh, Cape Cod, all of Rhode Island, Connecticut getting snow. And uh, you can see that coastal low tries to deepen a little bit and could bring some heavier rates tomorrow afternoon into coastal Massachusetts there into southeastern New England before eventually this starts to work on out of here. We'll add could see some showers as well and even maybe a quick burst of 
of snow uh, further south into Virginia, and you can see those showers down into the Carolinas tomorrow morning. But by tomorrow afternoon, it's just lake effect that starts to crank up here for your uh, afternoon of your Sunday into your overnight Sunday. And then you do see here by the time we get on into Monday, Another uh, clipper system starts to work in towards uh, the Finger Lakes and uh, in off the Great Lakes and into portions of the Northeast. That's kind of the timing of this thing. So, yeah, not a bad system. Remember, this will be the first uh, good snow of the year, I think, for those major cities of the I-95. D.C. has already gotten a little bit of snow, but Philadelphia up towards New York City, that corridor especially, yeah, not half bad. And the totals have trended up a little bit. Exactly how much could fall? Well, let me show you. All right, we'll start back out uh, into the Midwest where we're going to have some lake effect snow and current snow is starting to wind down. Now, this is as of 12 o'clock this afternoon, local time. So uh, subtract a lot of this, honestly, in terms of what's already fallen down towards Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio. But nonetheless, uh, up towards Michigan, we could get some lake effect snow that could bring a couple of inches into the Upper Peninsula, especially into uh, the eastern Upper Peninsula and then into the western shorelines and up here into the northern Mitten overnight tonight. Would not surprise me at all to get some uh, pretty good snowfall totals mixed in there. It's the Northeast that uh, this is going to be a bigger deal just because we haven't seen a lot of it so far this year. We'll start with the lake effect side of this. You can see the Tug Hill uh, into um, kind of the snow belt here of northeastern Ohio up towards Erie and Buffalo. Yeah, half a foot to a foot plus. I think especially up into the, the uh, Tug Hill going to be more than a foot of snow uh, that potentially falls out of this setup. And yeah, don't sleep on this down into northern West Virginia, southern Ohio before all is said and done. Uh, six to even eight inches of snow. Yeah, that's not bad at all uh, as we get uh, the snow to kind of work into those areas. Now, something that probably jumps out to you, this is the National Weather Service forecast. You see this big kind of uh, gap here in the middle of Pennsylvania. Uh, again, this is the NWS forecast, so you're going to get different offices with different forecasts, and this is kind of what happens, but we could get some downsloping winds here off the mountains of western PA, and oftentimes that kind of dries things up a little bit. Um, basically, what happens is it really just leads to sinking motion. Uh, in parts of the atmosphere, but uh, more importantly, like I said, drying things out, and that could lead to slightly lesser totals into that part of the state, but you look back out towards the southeastern PA, you get um, pretty good totals here. We're talking two to four plus inches. I would even say three to five would be a pretty safe bet in Philadelphia, southern New Jersey, out here towards uh, Baltimore, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe more uh, one to three, uh, but northern Delaware, and then check out Long Island. Yeah, we're looking at the potential for about one to three to four inches of snow in New York City. It's going to be very festive. Obviously, you've got uh, the Rockefeller Center, you got the tree, you got the whole thing. Perfect time of the year to get some snow into NYC. And I think as you go further north up towards uh, Connecticut, you're going to slightly come down on totals the further inland you go, maybe more of one to three, but you go coastal Connecticut uh, down into coastal Rhode Island and out towards the Cape. It could again be a three to five inch event from the National Weather Service here. I'll also show you some model data. This is the high resolution rapid refresh, even a bit beefier on these totals. You can see around five inches in Philadelphia. You've got around five inches on the model here in New York City, uh, about two to three up towards Boston, uh, probably around uh, three to four in a Providence, and uh, we'll call it one to three towards Hartford, and then uh, some higher totals. You can see even near half a foot out towards the Cape as that coastal low cranks up and throws back some moisture. A little bit better here on the Her as well into central PA where the NWS is a little less excited, but either way, you get the point. A nice first snow of the year for some of these major cities. Uh, great day of the week. It's Sunday, so not too many people out at their 9 to 5 jobs. Everyone can kind of sit inside, look out the window, and enjoy it. Uh, but uh, yeah, festive time here and a great early season little winter weather event. After this, though, the cold air settles in. Let's talk about how cold it could get, how long it'll last, and then we'll briefly touch on the long range here in just a moment. Let's start with this. Temperature anomaly is going to plummet for many of us. Uh, this is when you're getting out the door tomorrow morning for your Sunday off to church or off to the grocery store, uh, wherever you might be heading. We're talking about temperature anomalies, folks, 35 degrees below what we should be this time of year. And I don't need to remind you, it's the middle of December, so not necessarily what I would call uh, a warmer time of the year. Yeah, so you go 35 below what's already cold. That's brutal, dangerous cold, frostbite concerns, uh, pipe bursting cold here for the Midwest by tomorrow morning. You can see all those blue and anomalies by tomorrow afternoon and into the evening that all shifts down into the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, the Deep South, everyone getting in on this brutally Arctic air lasting here for your Monday afternoon. This is your Tuesday afternoon. 
Notice what starts to happen. This cold air doesn't last very long. I mean, this is kind of in the theme of the winter so far is it's been very transient with the cold air. I mean, it's been in, it's been out, but what has happened is we've had a lot of different shots coming in. So it's been cold overall, uh, but we haven't had singular shots getting locked into place. Um, and this is going to eventually run out. The train of cold air, you can see by the middle of next week, we really start to warm up. How long that'll last? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, uh, let's talk about the actual temperatures themselves. Uh, like I said, getting out the door tomorrow morning, uh, you know, a brisk negative five to negative 10 up towards Des Moines, negative 15 or so into Minneapolis, uh, negative 20s mixing in. And that's not wind chill. This is just the bare bones temperature uh, up into North Dakota. Now, by tomorrow morning, the front likely hasn't worked through places like Charlotte, Columbia, uh, down into South Georgia and southeastern North Carolina. So warmer there, but the northeast getting in on 20s tomorrow morning, at least the coastal sections, the interior, finding those teens and single digits into the higher elevations. And uh, yeah, it's a cold start to the day. Your Sunday afternoon, the front starts to work through. The highest we get is about 45 in Charlotte. We find 55 or so into Columbia, uh, but single digit highs up towards central and northern Illinois into a Wisconsin into portions of Iowa. We've got snowpack, so that's going to really lock in this cold air even better. Uh, we're talking about highs into the 20s into the I-95 corridor, and then everyone feeling it by the time you're getting out the door Monday morning. Teens into the deep south. We've got single digits in the Ohio Valley. Uh, below zero temperatures up into Indianapolis, down towards uh, central Illinois. Once again, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, that dark purple. You even see it up into the Adirondacks of New York. That is sub zero temperatures, uh, single digits and teens into the I-95. So yeah, brutal cold for our Monday and uh, your Monday afternoon. We're going to start to moderate, especially up into the uh, northern part of the country, but that's going to be the coldest day into the deep south and mid-Atlantic, uh, but actually feeling a lot better as we get all the way up into the 20s and uh, even near freezing for portions of the Midwest and into the plains. And then that starts the pattern change back to the warmer side. What's causing that and how long that's going to last? Let's talk about it and talk about that next storm that could be on the way around a week or so from now. Well, our upper level map is going to be a great tool to use for kind of uh, deciphering this warm up we've got on the way. Remember, the blue colors is where we have troughing. Those are pockets of colder air. We've got one of those big pockets right now, obviously, over the Midwest where we've got the cold air. That's the same thing that's helping to trigger off uh, that snow for the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast overnight tonight. You notice, though, it starts to get on through here by the next couple of days, and then a lot of orange taking over. A big ridge uh, sets up shop. This is by Tuesday into Wednesday. It's not going to stay there forever, though, and you can see we already get one dip back in the jet stream again, and once more, the rich going to get richer here at least, uh, or I should say maybe the poor get poorer if you're tired of the cold up in the Midwest. Another shot of that cold air, that's going to likely fire off a storm system and bring another shot of some wintry weather for some, but really cold air more than anything. And then as of right now, that's a big key, is as of right now, the ensemble show this big ridge of high pressure getting even stronger, and uh, we get locked into the heat dome through Christmas is what it looks like right now, at least in the model data. Now, I'm not entirely sold. Um, like I said, we've got another shot of cold air, at least for some of us with that next system around five to seven days from now. Does it stay like this? We'll see. We're still in a favorable MJO pattern, uh, but the PNA and the NAO, which are other weather patterns, are kind of fighting us right now and trying to allow this warm up. Um, anyone who tells you they know exactly what's going to happen for Christmas this far out is lying to you or just taking a guess. But um, we'll we'll see what ends up happening. But in terms of the temperature anomalies, there's the big shot of cold air right now. Here comes the warm up. You see, it doesn't last forever though. The Midwest, the Northeast, another shot of cold air. This is by Friday into Saturday of this coming week. And then if the models have it. Right Right, which we'll see uh, the heat dome works in. This is all the way in towards Christmas Eve uh, as uh, the model shows now. It's crazy thing. It's only about you know, 11 days away, 10 days away or so. Uh, crazy stuff. But we'll see what happens that far out. Obviously, plenty of details to iron out. In terms of the next storm, though, let me show it to you. It could be a pretty feisty one. It could bring some rain and some winter weather. Let's briefly give you a sneak peek at it, and then I'll let you go. Now, obviously too early for specifics on this next storm, but uh, like I said, I do think it could pack a bit of a punch and uh, the timing going to be, like I said, towards the end of this coming week. Here we go. You can see uh, through this week, pretty quiet. There's our current storm. And then we get that little clipper into the Northeast, maybe Monday or Tuesday. We'll talk more about that as we get into short range models tomorrow. Uh, but then we're quiet all the way up until here. Another piece of energy diving down out of the PNW. Going to bring a lot of rain and a potentially snow there for the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies. 
and then get some of that down sloping action, starts to stretch the vorticity. And I'll be honest, this could bring blizzard conditions to portions of the Northern Plains. That's where the cold air is gonna be, that's where the uh, wind is gonna be, and some moisture. But areas further east, I think this is gonna be more of a wind and rain event here by, this is Thursday into Friday. You'd see this uh, skinny band of maybe even some thunderstorm activity and warmer temperatures getting brought up north, apparent low all the way up into Canada. Uh, but on that backside, that's where we would watch for maybe some blizzard potential. Uh, not a slam dunk forecast right now, but something that can happen with these sorts of setups. And then, yeah, all rain, it looks like for the northeast out of this one from the European model. The GFS, not much different. Here it comes. And uh, yeah, looking pretty similar. Let's have some some cold air left over in the northeast gets a little bit of an icy wintry mix on the front end of this and then changes to rain this would be thursday afternoon and then here would be your uh, early friday morning so we'll watch that the potential for it absolutely can happen obviously we got a lot of cold air now it's not going to immediately go away we've got snowpack up there so maybe this is one of those events it starts as a wintry mess into parts of the interior of the northeast uh, but then either way, likely changing the rain for everybody outside of maybe that snow potential on the backside up through the northern plains and midwest so that's all I got for you folks on this uh, wonderful Saturday evening. And uh, yeah, I'll just uh, again leave you with this. Cold air working in for snow of the year on the way for some. And then we get a bit of a break, honestly, uh, this week coming up. And uh, we'll take things a little bit slower. All right. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe. Stay warm. Brutal cold air here. Check on your neighbors and enjoy the snow if you're getting some of it. And yeah, also, I would enjoy that warm up on the way because likely it won't last forever. Plenty of winter to go. All right. Y'all have a great one. And I'll see you all next time.